Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland Zone 7. Today I figured it was time for another update on all of my seedlings that I have growing in my seed starting studio. So come with me and let's see how things are doing here in the seed starting studio. If you've been following along with me over the last couple of months, you know that I've been starting seeds of all different sorts, lots of annuals, a couple of other things as well. I've got two whole shelves and each of these shelves is two feet by four feet and it is chock full covered with seeds that are currently growing. Also outside, I've already moved um, 32 cells of sweet peas. So this two shelves plus 32 sweet peas um, are fully underway and doing really well. I thought today we would take a look at what's going on and um, understand how things are coming along. So I just thought I would give you a close-up look at everything that's happening. I've done this before where I just do a quick pass through, but today we're going to look really closely at each of the trays that we have underway. Let's start with this tray here. We have ageratum that are fully underway. We've got one, two, three, four, five rows of ageratum seeds. Most of the cells have one seedling in them, although a couple of them have two, and actually this one has three seedlings in it. This one has two, doing pretty well, and it looks like one escaped and went over into the next row. So I have three rows here that are supposed to be celosia. This is the flamingo celosia. And as I said, this is an ageratum that just hopped over into the wrong cell. I'll leave him here. There's no reason to bother him. Only two of these celosias sprouted on the first go around. So I replanted all three of these rows. And on the second planting, I got some growth here. There's two there. There's one here, but it doesn't look like it has any top leaves. I don't know what happened there. Um, and there's one right here that still has its seed head on it. Can you see that? Maybe it's too hard to see. Um, that's it. So the celosia really did not germinate well for me. And the things that did germinate, they're not exactly thriving. So celosia, not so much of a hit for me this year. And then over here, I've got Dusty Miller and they are doing really well. I think I have two or three seedlings in each of these cells. I'm going to see if I can separate them and because I would love to have all of these turn into plants actually. You see that I do have the first little tiny gray fuzzy leaves coming along. Each of these seedlings has its first seed leaves and then it has another pair of, tr of true leaves but they're not gray yet. And then coming along behind that you can see the first gray leaves coming. I think those are so cute. Okay, next tray up. This is kind of a mishmash of a couple of different things. Over here, I have three three inch pots of cathedral vine. This is also called cup and saucer vine. In each of these three inch pots, there are two um, vines. Now this one looks like it got broken. So I'll just take that off. But it's okay, it's got more leaves coming along there. It'll recover from that. So I believe I have six plants of cup and saucer vine and it's starting to twine on itself over here. So this is all good news. I'll probably plant this whole pot with both of the vines. I won't separate them. I'll just let them grow onto the same support. Next over here, these are not doing great. They are cypress vine and I only got three sprouts on them and the three sprouts that I got look really puny. So I don't know if they're going to make it through or not. They're in peat pots. I was told on this packet to plant them in peat pots or something else similar so that I don't have to disturb the roots. I did that, but I'm having a heck of a time keeping them moist enough. I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. They've dried out. Over here, I have some, uh, these are snapdragons. And um, these are some that I have separated out from the original planting container. Uh, let's see, these are Potomac Pink, these are Potomac Apple Blossom, and these are Madame Butterfly Rose. So two of each of those. Um, you can see I've got some what looks like chlorosis on the leaves. So I've been fertilizing them, but I'm not sure they like the fertilizer I'm giving them, so I might change it up this next time. What you see on this soil here are the bubbles from the fertilizer when I mix the fertilizer up. It's not mold. That's just the residue from the bubbles that didn't dry properly. Here I've got straw flowers. Uh, I only have one, two, three, four, five plants out of the possible eight that I sowed. 
Here I've got lots of fever few. You can see it was thickly sown and it has come up thickly, so that's nice. And yarrow, um, over here, lots of yarrow as well. That has done really well, and so that will be a nice perennial crop to put out. All right, this tray is looking good for the most part. My labels are all backwards. Over here, I've got two rows of white scabiosa. Here, I've got two rows of deep blue scabiosa. Um, the scabiosa in the blue section, I got only got one, two, three, four, five cells that didn't germinate out of uh, 12. So I got seven that did. This one's seed head is still stuck on it. So is this one. I'll let that work itself out. Over here on the white, I did get a better germination rate. Um, I have three rows of Nicotiana here, and they've done pretty well. I probably will need to thin these out. Um, this tray, by the way, is desperately in need of water. Here I have two rows that didn't germinate at all, and that's cardinal flower. That happened to me last year as well. I didn't have any germination on my cardinal flower. Now they may have wanted a warmer environment. I didn't use a heat mat for this, but it is what it is. So uh, that didn't work for me this year. And then here I have three rows of Unwinds mixed dahlias. And these are the same dahlias that I grew from seed last year. I had very good success with them. The only problem I had with them last year is that they developed spider mites. So I'm hoping I don't have that problem this year. I'll use neem oil as a preventative on these. But I have three rows. Um, actually, these last two rows I had run out of seed, these last two cells. And then this cell up here didn't get any. But uh, looks like looks like four cells didn't get any out of these 18. So that's pretty good. 14 new dahlias from seed. I need to water this tray, but otherwise I think I'm going to leave this alone. The Nicotiana, I'll do some research and figure out if I need to try to separate these or not. Otherwise, I just need to water. This half of the tray I'm super happy with. This half of the tray I'm also super, ha super happy with, but for different reasons. So let's first talk over here. These are Snapdragons. These are Potomac Apple Blossom here. And these are Madam Butterfly Rose. And they're looking great. These are ones that I separated out from the main cell tray that I had planted them in. These had grown two to a cell or even three to a cell. And I transplanted them into here. And now they're doing very, very well on their own little cells here. These are ready for pinching and um, potting up the, the cuttings. This is Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus. I have 16 cells here with 100% germination. Uh, maybe not 100%. Look at that. I'm missing one here. But pretty much uh, I've got, well, there's two in that one. So yeah, it is 100%. I have 16 plants. Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus are an annual and they grow to the size of a small shrub. They have these beautiful red leaves on them and they can stand in place of, if you wanted a Japanese maple but didn't have one, this could serve in that place. A lot of people use these as hedging uh, or as red accents in a shrub border. That's how I'm going to be using mine, both of those ways. So I'm excited about these. I don't need 16 of them, so I'll probably be giving some away to friends. But otherwise, I'm super happy about how well those did. By the way, these seeds germinated in three days. It was amazing. And they're super healthy. And I've done nothing special to them compared to anything else. So really happy. <coughs> really happy with the Mahogany Splendor. All right. And then over here... This is exciting as well. I had been complaining a little bit, but I wasn't getting germination, but now I do. These are white swan echinaceas, both of these. So I planted eight of them, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plants out of the eight cells. I planted these on February 7th, and this is how they look six or seven weeks later. So they're very slow to germinate, but they did germinate, and I'm going to be babying these and hoping that I can get them to turn into garden-sized plants. And now over here, this is another thing that I had complained about, four cells of Verbena bonariensis. And again, these were planted on, I believe, February 7th, and they hadn't done much either until I think it took until March 10th, I think, they finally showed the first signs of germination. And now I have multiple plants in a couple of these cells. So that's good news as well. They finally came through for me. These are four cells of blackberry lily. These are plants that I got sent from a viewer. Thank you again for sending those along. And I've got three per cell, and all, all of them germinated 
eventually. It took them some time, but they did. So this whole tray is a very, very big success in my opinion. Now these snapdragons, I could choose to pinch them off and make them branch and then use the cuttings to plant and root them for new plants. But I think for these, I'm going to leave them unpinched. And that way, they will bloom first with one tall spike. And after I cut that one tall spike off, it'll branch out for later blooming later in the summer. But the other snapdragons that I have, if I pinch them now, they will bloom two or three or four weeks after these do, but I'll have an earlier succession of blooms than if I just left them all tall, if that makes any sense. So these singles will bloom first, then the other ones that I pinch will bloom, and then these pinched ones will bloom, and so on. So I'll have a longer season of snapdragons if I don't pinch some of them. Okay, this is a tray full of lots of different types of basil that uh, many of you watched me plant these, and I'll get to the explanation over here in just a second. Anyway, I have two rows of purple ball basil. Looks like this one is not a purple ball. I don't know what it is. Same thing here. So we had some cross seeding going on, um, but lots of good germination on the purple ball basil. Probably leave these uh, multiple seeds per cell and just let them grow as if they're one plant. This one only one came up, so it'll be interesting to plant them out. But um, yeah, you don't have to separate basil. You can just leave them and let them grow into a nice shrubby ball. Here are two rows of cinnamon basil. Basil, 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 um, and they are all doing well. One in this cell, two in this cell, one, one, and like four or five here. So a little bit uh, hit or miss. I'm pretty sure I put the same-ish number of seeds in each of the cells, but sometimes I only got one, sometimes I got more. Here I have uh, three rows of red Reuben basil. This cell has none, but this cell has five or six and so forth. So it's a little hit or miss, a little uneven, but they're going to do all right also. Again, here's a green one. This is one row of dark opal basil. Actually, I, when I planted it, some of you caught this, I planted two rows of dark opal basil, but then I accidentally over sowed the Hopi red dye uh, amaranth on top of the second row of dark opal basil. So what I did was I pinched out the dark opal that germinated in each of these cells. So I did have both kinds of plant in each of these six cells, but I've pinched out the basil. All right, here I've planted some old seeds of Love Lies Bleeding Amaranth. They were pelleted seeds, and I was told that pelleted seeds don't last as long from year to year, and it seems to be true. None of the pelleted seeds of Love Lies Bleeding Amaranth have um, germinated. And then here, last two rows I planted uh, two rows of four or five year old seeds of nodding pink onions and none of those have germinated as well. I'm not giving up on them. They may just be slow to germinate, in which case that's fine, but um, I'm not counting on any of these last three to actually grow. So what I'm doing with all of these is I'm just fertilizing them once a week with a uh, fish emulsion fertilizer and letting them grow on. This is a very healthy, happy tray full of stock, isn't it? Oh, look how great these plants look. Uh, I have separated these out, so there's only one per cell now, and they're all just doing so well. These are Quartet Rainbow right here. These are also Quartet Rainbow. And then over here, I've got Iron White, so 16 of each, and they're just looking wonderful. Now, stock is a plant that you do not um, pinch out. Um, because it only grows one stalk and it will not grow side shoots. So you don't want to pinch your stalk. You do want to pinch your snaps. So these are just doing really well. After we get the next three nights over with, I think I'm going to start hardening these off so that I can plant them outside. Um, we have three nights going down into the low 20s coming up. So I don't want to put them out right now. But uh, after those three nights pass, these are going to get hardened off and uh, get it ready for planting outside. All right, now speaking of snapdragons, this is a tray of 24 snapdragons that are definitely ready for pinching and uh, rooting the cuttings. So I have a row here of bridal pink. You see how tall they are. They're um, hmm, probably six inches tall now and stretching a little bit. So it's time to pinch them off and put the cuttings into water. I've got a row back here of Potomac pink and they're stretching as well. 
And then in the middle, I've got a row of Potomac Apple Blossom and a row of Madam Butterfly Rose. And so the two middle rows are shorter than the two outer rows, and that's because the light strip was low across right here, and these had to reach in toward the light. So now I know that I need to uh, do a better job of evenly spreading out my light source so that my uh, rows don't stretch like these have. This is a fun tray. I have three rows of status. These are uh, white status, these are seeker blue, seeker white, seeker blue, and heavenly blue. I grew status last year. I liked it a lot. It did really well for me, so I'm eager to have these plants as well this year. This last row here is a row of gomfrina, and I don't know what I'm looking at here. I think this is a gomfrina plant, but it's the only one that's grown. Everything else is still little teeny tiny seed leaves like that, and only a couple of them. And so I don't know if these have died or if they're sitting there just being slow or what. So one gomfrina plant out of a row of six, who knows? I don't know what's going on with this. These were planted on February 14th, and you can see the germination rate is pretty sparse on the gomfrina, but the status doing great. Here's a tray of cosmos. I have eight double click mix cosmos. I have eight snow puff white cosmos and then eight apricot lemonade cosmos and these are doing quite well um, actually i have pinched them all i snipped them off the other day um, so each of these has already been pinched off and so they're starting to branch out hopefully you can see how that's happening lots of branches going to come out of there um, they got a little bit tall reaching for light before i caught them so now hopefully they'll just pinch and branch out and be nice and strong. I do keep a fan on them so that they are strong. You can see how nice and uh, firm they are. They pop right back into place. They don't flop over. So I'm happy with these. It's doing well. So that's a current status of almost all the seeds that I have going on. I will do a poncho, the ancho seedling update separately. And also, you may remember that I took upstairs into the kitchen. I took some uh, a tray that had two kinds of basil and one kind of cilantro in it. That is doing great upstairs on the kitchen counter under a grow light up there, and we are using it in our cooking, so that's all going well. And then outside, as I said, I have my um, 32 count root trainer tray of different kinds of sweet peas, and they're doing well also. So that's what we've got going on right now. The next task is to snip off and root out these Snapdragon um, seedlings. So let me get prepared for that. Actually, folks, I'm just gonna cut in here. I see that my video is already 17 minutes long, and I think that the work that I did on these seedlings is gonna take quite a bit longer, and I wanna keep the videos a little bit short. So I'm gonna cut this off here. I just wanted to say thank you for tuning in with my seedling update. I hope that your seedlings are doing really well as well. I'll see you in another video real soon, friends, where I will show you how I pinched off and rooted cuttings from these Snapdragons. And also I prick out and separate some of the other seedlings as well. So look for that video coming up soon. Thanks so much, friends. I'll see you again really soon. Bye-bye.